Crypto adoption is on the rise and not just on the investment side. More people than ever are using cryptocurrencies to interact with decentralized applications of all kinds. The key to this kind of crypto adoption is ease of use, and this is an area where Phantom's browser extension wallet has taken the crypto world by storm. Today, I'm going to give you a bit of background about Phantom, show you how to use its browser extension wallet, and tell you what effect Phantom could have on the crypto industry. Before I show you how to dabble with dApps, I need to make sure we're on the same track. Nothing in this video is financial advice, and that's a fact. It's just educational content delivered with clarity and tact. Please contact a financial advisor if you're looking for a money map. If this is the first time you hear my rhymes, my name is Guy, and this channel is home to some of the highest quality crypto content you can find. This includes coins, tokens, news, reviews, and other topics that will blow your mind. If this sounds mighty fine, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't fall behind. If the grains of sand in your hourglass are running low, you can skip ahead using the timestamps below. Watching until the end, though, is how you can help the channel grow. That's all you need to know. Let's see how the Phantom Wallet works and how it could change crypto. The Phantom Wallet was founded in March 2021 by computer scientists Brandon Millman, Francesco Agosti, and Chris Kalani. All three founders worked for another crypto project called ZeroX before founding Phantom. For those unfamiliar, ZeroX is a decentralized exchange built on Ethereum. Now, prior to ZeroX, Phantom's founders worked for big tech companies, including Facebook, Twitter, and Yelp. So yeah, these guys are pretty legit. The trio founded the Phantom Wallet with the goal of becoming the best, i.e. most user-friendly, browser extension wallet in cryptocurrency. Rather than go head-to-head -head with Metamask on Ethereum right away, the Phantom team opted to start by building on a promising smart contract cryptocurrency in need of a browser extension wallet before going multi-chain. They settled on Solana because of its large VC backing and because Solana users tend to be active users of other cryptocurrencies too. This would make it easy for Phantom to achieve adoption on other chains. The Phantom browser extension wallet launched in April last year and the project raised $9 million from various crypto VCs shortly afterwards. By November 2021, the Phantom wallet had reached the 1 million download milestone. Today, Phantom has over 2 million downloads, and this makes it the second largest browser extension wallet in cryptocurrency by user count. Not only that, but Phantom recently raised another $109 million from various crypto VCs, giving the project a valuation of over $1 billion, which makes it a so-called unicorn. Why is so much money pouring into Phantom, you ask? Well, by the end of this tutorial, you'll understand. The first step to using Phantom is to add the wallet extension to your browser. To do this, simply find the Phantom Wallet website, click the download button in the top right, scroll down the page and select the appropriate browser. Note that I'll leave a link to the Phantom website in the description. You're welcome. Now, because I'm using the Brave browser, I'll be downloading the Phantom browser wallet extension from the Chrome web store and to do that, I just click Add to Chrome. A pop-up will come up that asks you to confirm adding the extension. Just click Add Extension. After a few seconds, a page that looks like this will automatically open. Click Create New Wallet. You'll first be asked to create a password and agree to the terms of service. Make sure to come up with something super secure, not just the word password looking at you, Grandma. Next, you'll be shown your secret recovery phrase. Hovering over the blurred box will reveal the words. Make sure to write these down and put them in a secure place. Do not show them to anyone because these words can be used to recover any crypto in your phantom wallet if something happens to your computer. After you've written down the seed phrase, check the box that says I saved my secret phrase and click continue. Next, you'll get a message telling you that you can use the Alt plus Shift plus P keys to open the Phantom Wallet at any time, though I must admit that I've never done this. Anyhow, click Continue again. 
This will bring you to the final slide of the setup, which prompts you to follow Phantom on Twitter. Now, I suggest doing so because Phantom sometimes retweets promising Solana projects that have yet to pop. Just remember to do your research. As with other browser extension wallets, you can open the Phantom wallet using the puzzle piece icon in the top right of your browser. Excuse all the other browser extension wallets. I'm a busy guy. Now that you've set up your Phantom Wallet browser extension, it's time to load it up with some Sol. Now, I'll start by saying that the Phantom Wallet website recommends you always keep at least 0.05 Sol in your wallet to ensure you have enough to pay for transaction fees regardless of network activity. If you already have Sol sitting around somewhere, then obviously the easiest option is to just send it to your Phantom Wallet by opening up the wallet and copying your Phantom Wallet address by clicking on the top area where it says Wallet 1. I'll show you how to rename your wallet in a minute. If you don't have any Sol sitting around anywhere, then obviously you're going to need to buy some. Now, you have three options here. And the first is to just buy Sol on your favorite crypto exchange and send it over. Your second option is to buy Sol from directly within the Phantom Wallet using a credit or debit card. To do this, open the Phantom Wallet, click on Deposit, then click Buy with MoonPay. This will open up a window that lets you select how much Sol you want to buy. Note that buying Sol this way is a bit more expensive than buying it on a cryptocurrency exchange. It's also quite tedious as you must provide a bunch of personal information including your email, name, address and credit or debit card information too. That's why I prefer the third option which is to connect my Phantom Wallet to my FTX US account. To do this, open the Phantom Wallet, click on Deposit, and then click Transfer from FTX. This will open up a window that asks you to log into your FTX US account, and once you've done that, you'll see the Sol balance on your account pop up, along with the option to transfer it to Phantom. If you don't have an FTX US account yet, you should check out my FTX US tutorial in the description, which comes complete with a juicy trading fee discount. Now that you've added some Sol to your wallet, you can start exploring some of the Phantom Wallet's features. Let's start by changing that default wallet name. To do this, open the Phantom Wallet and click on the gear icon in the bottom right. By clicking into the box where it says Wallet 1, you'll be able to edit your name. Choose one that suits you. Since we're already in the settings, there's a few other options I should point out. You can change the language of the wallet. You can add frequent wallet addresses, you can change your wallet password, you can set the auto lock time for when you must re-enter your password, and you can even change the cryptocurrency blockchain you're using. Right now, this selection is limited to different versions of the Solana blockchain, but in the future it will include different cryptocurrency blockchains. More on that later. Last but certainly not least, the settings section of the Phantom Wallet is where you can see your secret recovery phrase or even reset your secret recovery phrase if you lost access to the one you currently have. On that note, you should always keep any crypto you're not actively using on a hardware wallet, and you can learn about how to set up the best hardware wallet in the biz using the link in the description. Now that you've tinkered with the settings in the Phantom Wallet, it's time to explore the next tab. This is the Recent Activity tab, which you can access by opening up the Phantom Wallet and clicking on the little lightning bolt at the bottom of the wallet. The Recent Activity tab is more important than you think. For one, it lets you double check whether your Solana transactions went through and where they went. The Recent Activity tab also lets you check whether there is someone else making any unwanted transactions to or from your wallet. This can happen if you interact with a malicious smart contract on a cryptocurrency blockchain, and this actually happened to a handful of Phantom users in October when they tried to ape into some hot new NFT collection, only to find that their Phantom wallets had been completely drained. Now this is why you should always double check that a dApp is legit before you click anything, and be wary of any websites that ask you to connect your browser extension wallet, be it Phantom or otherwise. If you're not sure, check the Solana ecosystem website and search for the project. If it doesn't pop up, you're either super early or it's a scam. In either case, you should probably wait and see before you ape. Now, if you want to learn more about how to research cryptocurrency projects, you can check out my video about that using the link in the description.
Now that you're aware of the importance of the Recent Activity tab, you're ready to try out Phantom's Swap feature. Fun fact, Phantom's Swap feature is how the company behind Phantom makes money. According to the Phantom website, quote, Phantom charges a flat 0.85% transaction fee on swaps. I should also point out that, quote, Phantom reserves the right to modify these fees and the pairs on which they are charged at any time in its sole discretion. So keep that in mind. Now, instead of being its own DEX, the Phantom Swap feature plugs into the Radium DEX behind the scenes, though it offers a limited selection of Solana tokens that you can swap between. As such, if you're looking for some meme coin, you'll have to go directly to the Radium DEX to get your fix. And I'll leave a link to my Solana tutorial in the description if that's what you're trying to do. Anyways, to use the Phantom Wallet Swap feature, simply select the amount of SOL you want to swap for the token of your choice and select Review Order. If you're happy with what you see, click Swap, and after a few seconds, your swap should be complete. Notice how there was no need to confirm the transaction, it just went through after one click. When you go back to the main tab of the Phantom Wallet, the balance of the token you bought will automatically show up. This will happen for any other Solana tokens you buy on the Solana blockchain, and if it doesn't, then that means you'll have to go digging through the Solana Blockchain Explorer find the token address and enter it manually into your wallet. The Solana tutorial I just mentioned shows you how to do that, so I won't get into it here. All I will show you here is how to select which Solana tokens you want to see on the main tab of the Phantom Wallet. To adjust this, click on Manage Token List. What's awesome is that the Phantom Wallet's token list is pretty extensive, meaning you probably won't have to go as far as digging through the Solana blockchain for a token contract address unless you're dealing with a real steamy shitcoin. Just search the name of the crypto you're trying to find and it should pop up. Click the little toggle next to the name and when you're back to the main tab of the Phantom Wallet, you'll see your token has been added to the list. Now this brings me to what is arguably the Phantom Wallet's most famous feature and that's its NFT Collectibles tab. To access the NFT Collectibles tab, click on the icon consisting of four squares at the bottom of the Phantom Wallet. As you can see, I currently have no NFTs in my Phantom Wallet. So let's change that, shall we? If you watch my video about the top NFT marketplaces, you'll know that Solana's top NFT marketplace is Solanart. This is where I'm going to pick up an NFT to show off the Phantom Wallet's NFT Collectibles tab. If the disclaimer didn't make it clear enough, this is not an endorsement of the NFT collection in question. I literally just chose one with the lowest floor price. As you can see, I now have one NFT in my Phantom Wallet. If I click on the NFT and scroll down, it gives me all the details about that NFT, as well as an option to send it to someone else. And that reminds me, if you're curious about the different types of NFTs and how they're valued, I made a video about that, which you can find in the description. I digress. The last phantom feature on the list is Sol staking, which can be done directly within the browser extension wallet. To stake Sol using the phantom wallet, click on your Sol balance on the main tab. Then click on Start Earning Sol. This will open a list of Solana validators, but before you delegate any Sol, pop open the Solana Beach Blockchain Explorer and check which validator takes the least commission. Now, commission is basically how much of a cut the validator takes from any staking rewards it generates with your delegated SOL. And right now, it looks like most Solana validators are taking 10%. Since Solana staking rewards are currently around 6% per year, that means you're missing out on around 0.6% per year, which doesn't sound like much, but can add up if you plan to stake for a long time. Speaking of which, be aware that any SOL you stake will be locked for five days, and if the validator you choose to delegate to does something shady, like attempt to manipulate transactions, the Solana blockchain will automatically destroy some of their stake, including yours. This means you should do your research on a validator before you delegate any SOL to them. Naturally, the risk of mischief with newer validators is higher, and these are often the ones that offer the lowest commission since they're trying to attract some stake. Even so, there appear to be a few big name validators offering zero commission staking on Solana, namely Allnodes, which runs validator nodes on multiple proof of stake blockchains. Again, this is not an endorsement, just an example. 
Once you've figured out which Solana validator you want to delegate your SOL to, go back to the validator list in the Phantom Wallet browser extension and search for that validator. Next, click on their name and select the amount of SOL you want to stake. Note that there is no minimum stake, but make sure not to accidentally click max because then you won't have any SOL left to pay for transaction fees related to other activities. After clicking stake, you'll get a message saying your staking wallet is being created. Once that's done, when you go back to the main tab and click on your SOL holdings, instead of start earning SOL, you'll see how much SOL you've currently staked. You can, of course, delegate SOL to multiple validators, and this can be done by clicking where it shows how much SOL you're currently staking, clicking on the three little lines on the top right of the tab, clicking stake, and once again searching for another validator to delegate to. When the time comes to unstake, simply select the validator you want to unstake from and click the unstake button. It's that easy. If you're wondering about the other ways that you can make passive income with crypto, you can check out my video about that using the link in the description. To wrap things up, I want to take a second to explain why Phantom is such a big deal for crypto. Besides the fact that the Phantom browser extension wallet provides an unparalleled user experience, the Phantom wallet will soon be adding support for the Ethereum blockchain. After Ethereum, Phantom will be adding support for other cryptocurrencies that leverage the Ethereum virtual machine and will also integrate the bridges between these blockchains directly into the wallet. I suspect that this cross-chain functionality will be built into the Phantom Wallet's swap feature. Assuming this is the case, it would constitute a cross-chain experience unlike any other. For now, though, the Phantom team is focused on, quote, perfecting the experience on Solana, which includes pushing the boundaries of what the browser extension is capable of. The Phantom team is also focused on its recently released mobile wallet, which is only available for iOS users for the time being. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a timeline for an Android wallet release. In any case, it seems that Phantom's rise has taken Metamask by surprise, and recent actions by Metamask's parent company suggest it's trying to stay at least an arm's length ahead in this arms race. Given how much money has been pouring into Phantom's pockets, however, it's clear that the biggest bets are on Phantom, and it's barely been around for a year. As a cherry on top, Solana is one of the most funded crypto projects out there, and it has likewise been allocating millions of dollars to development. If you want to learn more about Solana, you can check out my most recent update about the project using, of course, the link in the description. That's all for today's Phantom Wallet tutorial. If you found it helpful, let me know by smashing that like button. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next video, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you've already binged watched every video on this channel, well done. Head on over to Coin Bureau Clips to get more top-notch crypto content. You can also follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram for crypto memes and hot takes, and you can join my Telegram channel for daily crypto updates. I've even got a weekly newsletter where I tell you what I'm seeing in the crypto market as well as how I'm adjusting my personal crypto portfolio from week to week. Last but not least, there's the Coin Bureau merch store, which is filled with crypto swag galore. Hoodies, beanies, tees, mugs, and more. You can find your way to all of these resources using the links in the description. Thank you for watching, folks, and I'll see you all very soon.